my lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs> The big sad, I would say right now, is Fernando Tatis subluxing his shoulder. Yeah. For those who don't know what a subluxation is, it's a dislocation of your shoulder that actually then re re uh, attaches. So mm -hmm. it's not a full dislocation. It popped out, popped back in. Right. It's yep. subluxed. It came in and out. So the the bad thing about that is it ends up impacting the labrum in your shoulder. Right, that that's a cartilage ring inside of your shoulder that keeps everything sucked inside and keeps everything locked in. If that takes damage, you one are more susceptible to subluxation again. Mm -hmm. And if it, you keep subluxing, eventually you'll have a full dislocation that will require surgery. So he's currently 10 day DL, but he will not be playing baseball soon. Mm -hmm. um, as my professional opinion uh it, it's gonna take him longer than that we saw this as Mets fans uh not too long ago when uh Michael Conforto swung the bat shoulder yep. came out missed the rest of the season and was not the same player yeah, even when he came back up. yeah it was bad. um and it took him you know a a, a year and change mm -hmm. to really get back to being himself so looking at it I really really hope that he doesn't go that route. I hope it's more like he's out for, you know, three, four weeks, mm -hmm. and then he's able to come back and be his normal self and go back to that. Uh, but that is a tricky injury, and that's bad for the game because I know Padres fans, they, they were they were more excited than Reds fans are right now just to, just to have done the moves that happened. Yep. To have that guy immediately get hurt, mm -hmm. deflating. Yeah, that's deflating. tough. Deflating. It's... it's you don't hit, you don't like to see it. Um, I think I, I believe it's not his throwing shoulder, which is good. Um, but the, I think the little difference between him and Conforto's thing was it, when he swung, it was his back arm coming across his body that yanked it out, so it was a little more violent and just horrific. Um, Tatis was on his back swing coming around his body, so not maybe hopefully not quite as damaging um, in the long term. Um, but definitely what you, you don't want to see that happen, especially if you're a Padres fan coming into this with some serious momentum as a team. Um, and just up and down, there's been a ton of injuries already. Uh, Bell Bellinger's out with a calf. Aaron Judge, as we all suspected, <clears throat> I think the Yankees are trying to hide a little bit. Judge, ha Judge has a, uh, an oblique strain or it's sore or whatever, um, which isn't surprising, unfortunately. It's, it's not surprising. It's, it's him. Yeah, you know, and and it's it's a a, a sad thing because he's a really good player, but he probably needs to be a full time DH, mm -hmm. which means he probably needs to get traded or moved from the Yankees. Because I don't see a world where one anybody would take on John Carlo's contract. Mm -hmm. John Carlo, over the last couple of years, has has played more consistently than Judge. <laughs> which is crazy which to is say. Wild. <laughs> um, Sam, you're, you're, you got the situation with the catcher needs to DH on occasion, so mm -hmm. you, you can't. Judge needs to go and just stand up, swing the bat, go sit down. You know, he got he has to maybe play ten games, fifteen games, and people are going to hear this and they'll be like, "But he's such a good, he's a phenomenal defender." And it's like, mm -hmm. guys, he's a solid defender, but every time he has to make one of those elite plays, he is going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Because you're asking uh, a NFL tight end to go play corner, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And could he do it? Sure. But that body is going to break down because it's not built for that style. Mm -hmm. And just because these guys are athletic enough to do it doesn't mean they should do it. Yeah. And you're, you're now having a guy who showed the potential to have a special bat mm -hmm. who's just not going to be able to be that guy if he's hurt all the time. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you think it would be an option to swing him over to first base? No. You don't think he has a skill for it? You think it's still a liability? <clears throat> well, so there's there's twofold thing, right? You already have a guy who's hurt there mm -hmm. who was is your favorite player. Um, <laughs> so, like, if, Voight, if Voight's a 30-home a run guy at first base, you don't need – to move him to first. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, moving him to first makes you worse also, right? Because you're now, Voight has to go somewhere, and Voight can't go to the outfield. Nope. And 
then your voids your DH, and it's the same problem anyway. And you're going to need Judge to DH on some days anyway also. Mm-hmm. And again, there's too many big dudes who need to rest yeah. on that team. Yep, they got to subtract one. They have to move one, and nobody's going to take the big contract that you have on Giancarlo. And you have a situation where Judge is still cheap. So, like, if I'm the Yankees and I'm, I'm, I'm playing – MLB the show, mm-hmm. I'm trading him for prospects or, you know, something else that fills a hole. Because I, I will tell you now, as good as people think Judge is, it would be addition by subtraction. Mm-hmm. This goes back to the Mike Trout thing. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, if your team is misconstructed because of someone, right, you're there. And Judge is going to need money soon. What are you going to pay Judge? What's he going to want? He's gonna ask for the moon. Is he gonna <laughs> ask, is he gonna ask for um, a Lindor sized amount of money? Let's even say he doesn't ask for that, right? But is he gonna get paid twenty to twenty five million dollars a year for five to eight years? Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that what he's gonna shoot for? That wouldn't surprise me. Who's paying him that? Yankees can't. Yeah, you're already paying John Carlo that kind of stuff. Yep. To he's, be the same player. Yep. He's got to go somewhere where he can be that DH guy. Maybe you go to the outfield occasionally, but yeah. not really. And that's the thing. is, he, If he could play 30 games in the outfield in a year, mm-hmm. you, you're, you're probably okay. Yeah. Right? You can, only, you can play him one out of every three, four games in the outfield. Mm-hmm. Right? Instead of him not being in the outfield one out of every three, four games. Yep. Which is what they currently have. And, again, we, we, we go back more and more. Trade the player, the team gets better. Yep. Because they're doing, they, they look good, good now. Mm-hmm. There's parts of this team that are good. You can get a good player for Judge who you can replace. And then there's there's even the flip side is if you move Judge, right, Clint Frazier gets to play more. Clint's been starting. And, well, Clint's. Clint but he, start- they're still, they have a surplus of outfield. They have a surplus who, outfield because yeah. you have Hicks, right? Who, who Hicks, pl- Gardner. Hicks, Gardner, John Carlo, Judge, Judge. and Frazier. Yeah. And if you're looking at that situation, you have four guys who could theoretically be starters. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that Frazier's the worst of the guys in totality because mm-hmm. I think Hicks' defense is something that can't be replicated by and any of the other guys. Back, switch bat. Um, but Frazier's a good player. Mm-hmm. And if you put Frazier out there consistently and you were able to get back for Judge, uh, a starting pitcher. And, and Frankly, uh, they and might a, need a shortstop. Oh, <laughs> so Gla- you and I, separate from this podcast, Glaber got a lot of love when he first came up because mm-hmm. he got to get hidden by Didi. Yeah, Didi got to play shortstop, and everybody's like, he's playing second now, but he's a shortstop. Can you imagine when he's this good and he's also playing shortstop? He's going to be amazing. He's the best player in baseball. He's an MVP candidate. Mm-hmm. That's things that the dude on the other side of this wall used to say. Yeah. Now reality is set in. Mm-hmm. Labor looks lost at shortstop. Yeah, he needs to. He looks like that's it. not his position. He is a second baseman, and on a on a on a good day, maybe you could slide him to third. But shortstop is not for him. He he looks like he's confused. Yeah, it's it, it it's like the routine plays too. Like they could have won the game last night on a very casual ground ball to shortstop, and he, he just goofed on it. He never had to be the foot. His bat was so good that it hid the fact that his defense was mediocre, mm-hmm. right? And his bat looks so good, again, especially you're playing in the AL East. You accidentally hit some home runs. Yeah. You know, you look at DJ LeMahieu, right? Mm-hmm. His home run numbers were never near what he hits now. Now all of a sudden he's got home run numbers. We think he magically got that much better. No, it's the division you guys play in. Yep. It's, the, it's the parks you guys are playing in. So you look at a guy like Glaber, and Glaber's numbers are inflated mm-hmm. because of where he's playing. So ultimately, we think his bat is even better than he, it is because you're not normalizing for what people in that division look like. Right. Who doesn't come there and look like a stud? Years ago, Curtis Granderson leaves the Detroit Tigers. Mm-hmm. Granderson, at, at his best, was a 30 home run guy. Mm-hmm. Right, but he was more looking like 20, 25 home runs. That was his bread and butter. Let me be that guy. Then he goes to Yankee Stadium, and has back to back 40 home run seasons. Yeah, guys, that's literally. Then he goes that's to City Field. He, yeah. he loses 10 home runs. Yeah, he's still hitting more home runs than he used to, but he's literally lost 
25% of his home runs disappeared because he's not playing in small parks. Yep. So all these guys, you have to look at, the, they have this magnifier. I, I think Glaber is a really good player, but I think the idea that he's a superstar uh, is slowly fading away because you're seeing yeah. guys like Tatis, you're seeing other young players who come up mm -hmm. who look even better than him. he does. Uh, yeah, I, they, shortstop is something they might need so that they can slide some guys around. Yeah. But, again, I, that, that's a good problem to have. The Yankees have a good problem to have. It's a mm -hmm. problem that, you know, we talk about we think the Mets have. You're super deep. You have players all over who can play, right? So you can cover when guys are hurt. Mm -hmm. you, but there's also the downside of it is, is that you probably should package one or two guys together to become even more premium. Mm -hmm. And I think Judge's ability to play for the Yankees, he's never going to be able to play more than 120 games. Um and if he's never playing more than 120 games, there, there's guys who can give you the same thing and play every day Yeah, for less money. It, it'll be interesting if they hold on to him for the full year um, and then try to trade him next year because I'd imagine there will be a DH in both leagues next year. Um, it would shock me if, the, if it wasn't, so that opens up a lot of other trade possibilities yeah, for them. Yeah, I, I don't think they'll abandon him now mm -mm, I don't uh, think so either. Um, unless somebody gets super hot. Yeah. Like while he's hurt, somebody – like Clint Frazier would have to get stupid hot. Mm-hmm. And if Clint's super hot, how do you sit him? Right? It was the circumstance that the Mets find themselves and found themselves in with Dom Smith. Mm -hmm. Dom became such a good bat, he needs to play left field. Yeah. He's got to be in the lineup more. Yep. Because you can't you can't not play him. Force is the issue. Well, he only got that because of some some circumstance. Yep. Right? Got some guys get hurt, this happens, bat shows up, it looks good, has a season where he gets to play full boom. Clint needs that. Mm -hmm. And if Clint can be that guy and he can show up with a, a mid-800 OPS, I would trade Judge to somebody who can do it. And, I, and you're right, this year, maybe not next year, because you're going to have teams who are looking for a bat. Yep, and right? you know what? There's also a lot of big-name free agent shortstops next year. Ton. So they're, they're, I wouldn't be surprised if the Yankees were in the market for somebody like a, like a Javi Baez. Or a but are all those guys coming with a, a Francisco Lindor price tag? Maybe. Wouldn't surprise me. Honestly, I think the Yankees will be hottest on Corey Seager because you get a yeah. left-handed bat in Yankee Stadium and premium defender. That would be my pick. I also, honestly, I don't think he's going to leave LA. I think he has a two good there, um, but we'll see what his price tag is. They have a lot of expensive pieces. I don't know how they keep paying guys to all be superstars. They just have endless pockets. They, endless pockets <laughs> is one when you have a when you have a luxury tax. Endless pockets runs out soon. Yeah. Because it's not just the cost of what you're paying the guys. Yep. It's the penalty for paying them. Yep. Do you want to continue to pay the penalty at the scale that you're going to pay? Mm -hmm. So I don't know how long they can continue to do this because they've been doing it for a while. No, this this free agency with all these shortstops is going to be very interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see where they take the market because I think they're all very – they all have or will have similar price tags. Yep. Um, so we'll see. Anything else you got for the people today? Enjoy baseball, guys. Yeah. Baseball has been fun this year. This has been a great start to the, to, to a baseball season. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. There's a lot of new storylines. There's a lot of things that people are doing that are fun around the game. You know, this is the best that I've felt about the future of baseball in a long time. And yeah, I'm I very hope, excited. I hope it keeps getting better. I think it's so, a fun season. We appreciate you guys watching us again, like always. We'll see you next time. Baseball lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs>